Hello cybersecurity fans and welcome to another demonstration of the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst Plus Lab Activity. This is Activity 4-1 which is Assessing Command and Control Techniques. In this activity we will use ICMPSH which is a tool that creates a reverse connection from a slave computer which is the client to a master system which is the server. We'll start out the demonstration by logging in to Kali Linux. We're going to be using the username of root and a password of capital P A two two W zero R D. Once we get logged in, we're going to start by right clicking on the icon on the desktop that is the ICMPSH zip file. We're going to select extract here. You will note that we now have a folder on the desktop that is the extracted file from the ICMPSH zip file. We're going to start a terminal window. We're going to make it full screen. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to navigate to that directory by doing a CD and we'll do a forward slash root forward slash desktop uh, forward slash I for ICMPSH. We'll hit enter. We now want to look at the content of the readme file. So we're going to type the command more and we're going to type in readme and we'll get to readme.txt. We'll hit enter and you'll note that we have the contents of the readme.txt. Now ICMP shell is a reverse uh, ICMP shell from a slave system, okay, which is a client, to a master system, which gives us the ability to run malware on the client that will give the, the individual who's running the master system the ability to execute commands on the slave system. We're going to be using the ICMP protocol to transfer the commands and the results, the output of those commands. The reason we're going to be using ICMP is typically if we have the ability to compromise a system inside a network. The firewall will not be filtering ICMP traffic. We're going to be using a type 8 which is an echo request to transfer the data. Now the client will be sending echo requests to the server. The slave will be sending ICMP echo request uh, type 8 uh, to the server. And what we need to do is we need to tell the Kali Linux system do not treat an echo request normally. Ignore the echo request. We do that by running the command sysctl w net dot ipv4 dot icmp underscore echo ignore all. And we set that value to a value of 1 which will turn off that response. So we're going to highlight that command in the readme file and we'll do a copy and then we'll do a paste. We'll hit enter and we get a, get a message back that says yep we've got that taken care of. Excellent. That has been set. We're going to go over to the server machine quickly and also extract their ICMPSH uh, file. We'll go ahead and select Control Alt Delete. We'll type in password capital P A two two W zero R D. We'll wait for it to come up. First thing that we're going to get is a message asking if we want to be able to make this system discoverable on the network. We're going to select No. We're going to close Server Manager by hitting the red X in the upper right hand corner 
of Server Manager. We're going to bring up File Explorer. We're going to navigate to the C directory right over here. We're then going into the data directory for the class. We will then select Post Attack Techniques folder. And we will right click on the icmpsh.zip file and select, uh, oh, oh, there it is, Extract All. We're going to change the default folder to the temp directory. and it will display the contents of that extracted directory. Now we don't want to do anything else here. We're going to go back to the Kali Linux system by selecting Kali Linux up here. We're going to start the master on the Kali Linux system so that it can listen for the incoming ICMPSH connection from the slave. We'll do the command ICMP, oops, uh, SH, oh, dash M, and it's a per Perl script, by the way, PL. And we have to start that out by typing in Perl for P E R L, and then ICMPSH dash M PL. And that will start the master, and it is now listening for the incoming client connection. Okay. Now typically when you launch this attack you are more than likely on the slave computer, on the victim computer, create a script that will automatically start the slave and initiate the connection. For the purposes of this lab we're going to connect, rather than using a script, we're going to connect using SSH and start the slave. So we're going to bring up a separate terminal window. And we're going to use the SSH protocol. We're going to type in the username of administrator with an at sign followed by the IP address 10.39.5. Dot five dot fifty. We'll make a connection. We get a message. The message says we don't have the ability to validate this digital certificate we received from the SSH, SSH server. Would you like to continue? We're going to type in the command or the answer yes. Okay. The next thing it wants to know, well, it tells you, hey, you're <laughs> logging in to a private computer. Follow the rules. Okay. It'll ask you for your password for the administrator. The password is capital P A two two W zero R D. Okay. You'll notice that we are now logged into that Windows system. We have a command prompt for Windows. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to navigate to the uh, C colon backslash temp directory. The next thing that we do is we start the slave machine. The command is I C M P S H space dash T. The dash T is a required option. With the dash T as a required option, it wants to know what host you want to connect to. What's the IP address of the master? The command is or the IP address for this one is ten. Dot thirty nine dot five dot one hundred. Okay. Now the moment that I hit enter on the slave machine, okay, on the master, the terminal screen where the master is running, it should show me the temp directory. It'll give me the information about Microsoft Windows. Okay. And then it'll show me the temp directory. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit the enter. You ready? There we go. It's going to be magic. Okay. You'll note, indeed, it tells me Microsoft Windows 2013 version, and I have the temp directory. Okay. The next thing that I want to do is I want to go into Kali Linux applications. Go to the Kali Linux selection, if it'll let me. 
I, I love virtual machines. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Kelly Linux. I'm going to go down to sniffing and spoofing to network sniffers. And I'm going down to Wireshark. Boom. It brings up Wireshark. Now it tells me, gives me the first warning that says, you are running this as the super user on the system. So be careful what you're doing. You want to be aware of that. Some things are going to be disabled. I get a second warning. It says, yeah, you're running this as root under group root. This can't be dangerous. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm going to make this full screen. I'm then going to start capturing packets on my interfaces. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and select Ethernet 0 as a checkmark box and start capturing packets on that interface. I need to now expand my window and we'll do that by doing there we go that works great yeah pretty cool and you'll notice that I'm getting a large number of echo requests and echo replies I have a lot of those I'm going to then go back to the master where I've got that connection for the temp directory and again I'm going to be executing commands on Kali Linux that will happen using ICMP for communication method on server one. So I'm going to do an ARP dash A to get a listing of the ARP table. I'm going to do an IP config. Okay. And you'll notice that it is 10.39.5.50. Now I'm going to go back to the Wireshark screen and I'm going to filter the contents. I want ICMP contains, and I want the word ARP. And so I want only the packets, the ICMP packets, that contain ARP somewhere inside the packet. I'll hit enter, and you'll notice that I have two packets. Now, I'm going to drill down into those packets, opening up the ICMP header. And you'll notice it is indeed an echo reply. If I scroll down, there is a data section. I'm going to expand the data section. And I'll scroll down a little bit more. And you'll note that in the data section, right over here, you can see the ARP-A. That was sent using ICMP. So that will be that will be the contents of of the ARP A. Now let's see if we can find the IP config, the ICMP packet that contains I, IP config. Looks like that one's it there. And you'll notice right down here in the data section, I scroll all the way down, and you'll note that we have the data section open. It shows me right here the IP config command. And again, that's being sent over ICMP. Now, the, the again, the beauter, beauty of using ICMP is we typically don't filter outbound ICMP packets, and they look like normal traffic on my network. Now, we're getting a lot of them. And we have some methods that give us the ability to slow down the number of ICMP messages. If I go back up here to my readme file, I have the ability to identify the milliseconds for requests and the number and the bytes sent that will slow down the number of packets, the ICMP packets that are being that are being sent, which would be less likely to alert my intrusion detection system. But it's also going to slow down the response time between the slave and the master. But again, we have the ability to manipulate the uh, server one by creating an averse ICMP connection. Now we'll go ahead and close out Wireshark and not save the contents. We're going to stop and quit without saving. Okay. We're going to go back to the client or the slave and I'm going to do a control C and I'll exit out of SSH. 
to close out that connection. And then we'll go back to the master and we'll, we'll, we'll disrupt the master by doing a control C on the master. And you notice we're back to the command prompt. So that's the demonstration for ICMP SH, a reverse connection using the ICMP protocol between a slave and a master. I hope you enjoyed this video. There will be more videos in the future, more demonstrations in the future. Please, if you're interested, make sure that you subscribe. And every time we get an update, you will get an update to let you know that there's a new video out there. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have an excellent day.